All right. So now we're recording for those who couldn't join us today. But for those of you who have been in one of these Zooms with me, you know, I kind of like to kick things off with a, a song to get the day started, a little earworm that'll stick with you for the rest of the day. Um, so this is one that I met. I was fortunate to meet our partner earlier this year and was welcomed with this lovely song that really is a welcome for all of you as well. So we'll kick things off with that. <laughs> Our guests of honor, parents, and my fellow students, in front of you, I'll give Shpap girls ready to present your song. Sit down, relax, and, and shake, shake your collar. <laughs> <laughs> entrance on a Zoom. The beautiful <laughs> woman in yellow is Dr. Judy Makira, and she is our <laughs> co-founder and CEO of the Center for Women Empowerment and Technology based in Kenya. You'll hear from her in a little bit, but uh, we wanted to share a little bit of that joy and to let you know what an amazing dancer she is. <laughs> so Judy, if you can give a quick wave. Um, great. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, hi, hi. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, Judy. And I'm going to make you all wait to hear from her just a few more minutes, uh, because I really want to talk about why we're here today. Um, you already know what we're doing. We've launched a pilot of one of the mentoring programs that Clammy has been implementing that we developed together over many years as Africade, uh, Africade Tanzania, now Daring Girls and Glammy. And so this is sort of the next iteration of our partnership that we're really excited to take with all of you along this journey. Um, you know, we have uh, for years been implementing two mentoring programs that last year, almost a year ago today, uh, won the UNESCO Prize for Girls and Women's Education, the KISA Project and Binti Shupavu Mentoring Programs. Binti Shupavu is the mentoring program that we are piloting in Kenya through our new partner. Um, and we're really doing that because we saw for so many years how successful these mentoring programs were in Tanzania and we just wondered why, if they're so successful there, why not, why keep the secret? There are so many organizations that have such a need for this kind of programming. What if we found them, partnered with them, and see if this works in different countries and contexts through more partners? And so we think that, yes, they could be just, these programs could be just as successful in other countries. And earlier this year, we went on a journey to um, sort of get that into progress. So in January of this year, we put out a call for applications and shared a very detailed version of the curriculum framework with partners. This was over a very tight two-week window that happened at the end of January, beginning of February. We quietly announced this through several partners and were surprised at how quickly this gained traction. We had more than two organizations just completing the self-assessment to see if they qualified to meet our criteria to submit an application. We wanted to be very mindful of potential partners' time and not have folks fill out an application if they didn't meet the criteria. Um, we had, at the end of that two-week period, 75 completed applications from 12 countries in Africa. 
again, in this very tiny two week window. So that screamed to us even more than we were expecting to hear that there is just a need and a hunger for this programming. And we're just, oh, we were really, truly overwhelmed. We read every single application. We had Zoom interviews with um, our six finalists before we selected our first partner. Um, this was really a true partnership between Glammy and Fairing Girls and both of our boards. Um, we had representatives from our both of our boards, both of our staffs be part of this process and our partner was selected jointly, which is really exciting. And um, we thought we'd get about 20 applications. And so getting 75 was really quite overwhelming for us. Um, really, our vision with all of this is that by taking this partnership that has worked so well with Daring Girls and Glammy, Glammy has the proven um, mentoring programs that have worked so well for so long in girls in Tanzania. Um, they've got the expertise. They have the ability to provide the training. Daring Girls has all of you, our, uh, our wonderful partners and donors who help make this work possible. We also have the ability to provide some wraparound support operationally through social media, marketing, and other things that we've learned over the years through our partnership with Glammy. Um, and we knew that our new partner in Africa would come with local knowledge and networks, access, and the trust of their community. And so all of these things together make this beautiful partnership where we're equally contributing and equally benefiting. And so, um, and it makes things even better that we found such a wonderful first partner to kick this off with. Um, but before that, I am going to pass the microphone and the screen over to my colleague Anante Ninko with Glammy. She's the new executive director, and she'll say a few words about kind of what this means for her and for Glammy and what this partnership looks like. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and invite Anante to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I'm so glad to join you. It's really a pleasure to hear the collaboration between uh, uh, the sisterhood, the trio of sisterhood, and how Glammy can be able to, co um, to work together to ensure a girl child is really going to stay in school, perform well, become resilient, uh, confident, but in the end is we are making future leaders uh, who can change the status quo in our community. Uh, Glammy has been the true believers of girls have equal opportunity and girls must have equal rights in education. And with that saying, uh, we believe that uh, girls should stay in school, but again, they should be able to give back to their community at the end of their school cycle, their education cycle, but stand out to be um, leaders who are engaged exactly in their community. So that being said, uh, I am a very huge advocate on the equal, uh, equality, equal, equal education, uh, quality education, equal gender, and um, uh, decent work and economic growth. And all of these fit in what Glammy does and what Daring Girls are doing to ensure that Africa, and it mainly East Africa now that we're reaching this, um, this point, that girls will reduce the dropout in school and they can stay in school and start well, perform well. In the end, we make leaders who are resilient because challenges will never leave us, but also find ways to resolve these challenges through the surrounding that uh, we are working with. So my journey with Glammy started all the way back in 2010. And it's through the invitation uh, from Ashley and her team by then to come and speak with the girls in uh, high school. And that passion never left me over the past 13 years. And that's why I've been able to work with Glammy from 2010 to 2014 as a mentor and a project manager. But again, after stepping out, I was able to come back as um, mentor coach and event coordinator. With this, I have been able to be reminded throughout 
uh, that once you educate a girl child, you give equal opportunity to a girl child, I have witnessed the first impact of how that works because today I'm able to work with girls that I've mentored over the past uh, 10 years ago. And these girls are bringing a huge impact, not only in the organization, but in the communities. And why am I saying that? It's because throughout my uh, visibility for the organization, my work, I still meet girls who have I have mentored in high position in leadership, which means we are changing status quo uh, in the community and making sure girls are educated. These young girls are now educated and they're giving back to the community by participating in activities that are bringing the community and positive change in the community. So I'm a true believer of what Glammy does and what Daring Girls, and I think everyone around us and everyone reaching and contacting us should be contaminated with the idea that a girl child should stay in school but also support a girl child education. Uh, with that, I think over the 13 years, our relationship with Daring Girls has proven us that um, we need to work together. The, the journey of changing the status quo in our community, in supporting a girl child, it's not a one person's task. Rather, it involves um, holding hands together and work with the stakeholders surrounding us. But again, involving the organizations with like-minded organization. And I think one of the reasons today we're forging and we have been forging the relationship with also in Kenya is the fact that even in East Africa, many girls still need support to stay in school and to be able to be resilient because in the field, when you visit in the field, you get to realize the opportunity that the, these programs, that is TISA program and Binti Shupavu, have an impact, a direct impact to girls, even in school. In school. And that being said, I think we need to still collaborate and still expand but at the same time, to be able to document the procedure, the how, and how uh, we are moving forward so that if someone else in Zambia or in uh, Sudan, that they want to use the same uh, approach, how can they do that? And the, the whole aim is reaching um, a girl child all across the, uh, Africa, all across uh, uh, East Africa. But again, in Tanzania, we are still expanding in a sense that now we are in three regions. Over the past 10 years, um, 12 years, we have been in Arusha and Kilimanjaro. But again, in uh, this year, we expanded to Morogoro, which means we have witnessed that a girl in Morogoro is actually has a huge uh, need of support, not only a school education, but also personal leadership, life skills, to be able to control and guide their goals. This is something that we did not see it as soon as possible. But as more as we need to drop in and go deeper in Tanzania, it speaks well that still Glammy's mission and vision and what Daring Girls are doing, we need those efforts to work together in Tanzania. Currently, we have beneficiaries, uh, 14,000 beneficiaries. And if someone asks you, if someone asked me back in 2010, when we only had 23 girls, that we will reach 20, uh, 14,000 girls, I wouldn't be able to say this, but what I know, this database of 14,000 girls who have graduated from our programs, 
are well educated, they have confidence, and they are taking roles in the communities, leadership roles in the communities. And what does it mean? We'll have a future of girls and a strong leadership roles that we wish to see in, in Tanzania. Our journey does not stop here. We are looking forward to reach 20,000 by 2026. So reaching more girls is our target, either by going directly deep in Tanzania, by using different approaches, including partnering with sister organization in Kenya. This is our journey. And I think we all need to hold together our hands. We all need to look for people with the same like-minded ideas to work with us. The process is not easy, but the results are very beautiful to see. I wish one day you'll visit Tanzania, visit our fields, and see what I'm talking directly about. Karibuni sana. Thank you, Anande. Sante, Anande. Great. And I think to underscore um, Anande talking about just the depth that the Glammy has been able to go in Tanzania, and they have more things planned that we'll be sharing with you next year in ways that they'll be expanding. Um, but what I love about this partnership and our next chapter together moving forward is that it really lets Daring Girls and Glammy go wide through this new pilot approach to more girls and more places while Glammy continues to go deeper within Tanzania. So we're we're covering more ground all together in this new way. And so with that, I would like to now introduce my colleague, uh, Devota, who um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, well, actually, let, Devota, I'm going to let you say hello and talk a little bit about your role in this project. We're so lucky that Devota has joined Daring Girls as a consultant to lead and manage the training and implementation of this project because she brings <laughs> just more than a decade of experience working in these programs. And so we are so grateful for her for all that she's been doing. Um, and I'll let her share a little bit about that with you while I share my screen in a moment and she can introduce you to the mentors she's been working with. But Devota, take it away and talk a little bit about the training you've been doing and how things have gone. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. And hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever, wherever you are. And I'm so happy that you are here with us. Um, it's just an exciting moment and um, I'm so excited to speak at this uh, moment and reflecting back where we started in January and early February with this journey. I know this has been a long time dream of um, daring girls and, you know, previously African, where we're thinking of, you know, um, how can we support more girls? And um, one of the things that um, when Jessica joined, um, was talking to me about was more of like, I see there's so much impact in these programs. And, one of my biggest dreams was always uh, to reach more girls because I am the direct, the first direct person who have been impacted by this. And if you can listen to what Anandi has been sharing, it's just the same thing. Uh, what these programs do, they start with a person. So they started with me. And um, the more I got to interact with the content, I, I got to interact with the mentees, I got to interact with the mentor myself, I found out that actually something as little as seeing your fellow woman making it through the same situation you're in, making very, very, very big impact. So I won't go into details to that because Anandi has shared with us all this impact that has been happening to the girls here in Tanzania. I'm going to share with you a little bit of the experience that we went through to get uh, the partner that we're going to introduce to you um, today. So uh, in early February, we um, just get myself were just thinking and say, oh, maybe we're just going to get again, you know, 2010 application, but surprisingly, we got 70 applications. And um, one of the things that was stood out uh, from the organization that you're going to introduce today, our first partner, was the fact that, uh, first of all, it, um, it was the organization was rooted in a very a specific community, but also the dream of um, 
of the organization was so related to the work that you were doing. Uh, this organization was really trying to help uh, girls to really get the skills, the how, the know-how to navigate their lives in that community. And um, the one thing that really excited us was the fact that um, the belief that, you know, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, you'll be able to make a difference from where you're coming from. So that is one of the things that really draw us to that. And the biggest thing also uh, which draw us to this organization was the fact that the leader of this organization was a true mentor. The moment we started talking to this, um, to, to the leader of this organization, all of our, um, she just, it, it everything changed. Uh, we were all drawn to her. We we're all drawn to her energy. And this is the kind of the energy that we wanted to have uh, taken to the girls. So we knew exactly that this is the organization that we're looking for, but this is the person that we are looking for to be a role model to these girls who are coming from Muranga district. And uh, so we were able to come to a close to Swetek and <laughs> I'll just mention and just kind of let you, uh, you know, spread the news. And um, so we were able to close to this organization and what you're seeing on the screen, this, the two ladies in the middle, those are the two mentors that uh, were recruited by Swetek to start piloting this program in Muranga district. And my role there was to help now the organization to adopt the curriculum, the Binti Shupavu curriculum into their context. One of the exciting moments was when we realized that there is so much similarities with girls that are in Tanzania comparing to girls that are coming from um, Kenya, specifically Muranga, but also there are very, um, there are also visible uh, differences. One of the differences is that in Tanzania, we had to push so much for the parents to really um, understand the value of educating a girl and to really prioritize taking their girls to school. But in Muranga, the girls are already in school. But what was common among the two girls, like for both of the girls from Tanzania and Kenya, was the fact that they needed uh, skills, they needed um, tools that can help them to stay there in school, but also they needed someone who can really encourage them and um push them to believe that they can be more than just, you know, um, a girl from a village. They can be more than just a girl who belong into the kitchen. They can be more than, than just a girl who just gets education for the sake of education. They can bring the positive change in their communities. So um, through that processes, we're able to work with the girls, the two mentors, to really adopt the curriculum into that context so that it can respond to the needs of the girls. And another thing that we did with the girls is first, as I said earlier, to also transform the girls, for them to believe that they have something to offer to this girl that they're going to. One of the things that I remember was how scared in our first three training days the, girl, uh, the mentors were. One of them just asked, I don't know how to write notes. I don't know how to express myself. I am nervous. But then it was really nice to hear that after the first three weeks, those were just stories that I couldn't hear no more. The girls were excited. They were coming back with so much feedback and like, oh, my girl today showed up. One of the girls who didn't speak, they speak, they spoke for the first time. So our journey was first to contextualize the, the, the curriculum, but secondly, to support the mentors themselves to believe that they can do this and they have something to offer to the girls. And third, for now them to take over now and to, trans, to start transforming the girls. It's been six months. I used to see them um, every week, sometimes more than once a week. But now we see every um, we see one another every other week. Sometimes we don't talk to one another for like the, for two weeks, and that is communicating that they're already in the um, the ball is already rolling. They already have understood what they are supposed to do. And one of the most thing that I want to acknowledge these girls for is their passion. They are so passionate. They are so uh, keen into the work that they do, but also they are so they so really want to be part of the 
success of the job that they made. And I just want to conclude by saying, um, if anyone who wants to make an impact, you want to make an impact that will multiply. And I see this because it started with me, and then it went to more than 14,000 girls in Tanzania, and now it's going to more than 100 girls in Kenya. And God knows um, in the next couple of years, we are going to be in so many other um, other girls' life. It is working. It worked for me. I've seen it working for other girls. I've seen it working for the girls in Muranga, and I believe that this is going to work for so many girls here in Africa. And thank you so much for coming in. I'm throwing the ball back to you, Jessica. Thank you, Devota. Thank you. thank you for all you've done. I, I, I want to call out also the woman in the peach jacket. She is with Glammy. This is Iconde Muro. She works on the Mel team, but is a former mentor. And Devota and Iconde were in Kenya to train Harriet and Ivy, the two mentors in the middle, in April. And as Devota shared, they've been having regular Zoom conversations since. And so I know it has been so meaningful for Devota, for you and Iconde to see the journey of the mentors. And I know it's been meaningful for the mentors to have your support um, in contextualizing and localizing the curriculum to make it truly relevant for girls and their needs in Moringa County. Um, and just quick to give you a little um, perspective on where we're, uh, let's see if my screen will change here. Um, so where uh, I will introduce you in a moment to jo Dr. Judy Makira, who is the co-founder and CEO of the Center for Women Empowerment and Technology. Her office, they have a couple offices in Kenya, uh, but Judy is based just a little northeast of Nairobi um, in Moranga County, which is the, the the area in the red that you see circled there. So just a little context, it's about an hour and a half drive outside of Nairobi. If you find yourself there, or maybe you'll come with us next year, we'll get to that at the end of the session. Um, it's not so far, and I know that she would be delighted to introduce you to the work too. But with that, I am so excited to now finally let you all hear from Dr. Judy. Um, we have had the great fortune of getting to know her over the past several months, and I was so honored to meet her in person in July when I was able to visit her team. I mean, this woman is incredible. You'll hear from her in a moment, and I'll let her introduce how the organization came together and the many other really, really cool projects that they work on. And we're so glad that Binti Shupavu um, fit into their portfolio in such a beautiful way. Um, but Dr. Judy uh, has a PhD in computer science. She has been a university educator. Last year, she ran for parliament in, Can in Kenya. Um, she did not win, but she is the first woman to run since the 1960s in her county. So she is a trailblazer left and right in a million ways, and now she's trailblazing a new path for us in Kenya. So, um, Dr. Judy, I will let you uh, introduce yourself here. I'll stop sharing, and then we'll get into some photos and videos of the work in action. But please say hello. Tell us about Sweetek and how Binti Shupabu is going so far. <laughs> Wow, wow. Thank you so much. I'm so delighted today. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Let me tell you that we have waited for this day. We can't wait to start sharing all those nice photos and really screaming because we are so excited about what about our partnership with Daring Girls. So um Partners and my colleagues, my name is Dr. Judy Makera. I'm an educator by profession and I've been a, 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 I've been a lecturer at the university. And currently uh, in Kenya, when you're vying for a seat, you must resign. And therefore I had to resign. And uh, when I did not go through the parliamentary seat, I was vying for as the first woman ever to vie for that seat. No woman has ever actually vied and no other woman ever sat for that. I After that, I did not uh, go back to university. I decided that the community needed me in a bigger way than even when I was to go for that seat. And therefore, I am the CEO of Swetek and also a co-founder. So before I say much, I know we have uh, Swetek. Swetek is Center for Women Empowerment in Technology. So we have other colleagues from Swetek, and I will start, I will just mention them and they will wave starting with our very supportive and lovely chair lady of the board of management. Eunice, are you here? Kindly wave, where are you? 
I saw your sweet self somewhere. Are you there, Eunice? Uh, she's somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm waving. Thank you so much, uh, daring girls and all the partners. Yes. Thank you. That is our very able chair of the Board of Management. We have another member of the board. Steve, are you here? We have only one gentleman in our board, and he's called Steve. I saw him. So he's here. He will, he, uh, he will wave as we go on. We also uh, have mentors. Our mentors are here with us. Harriet and Ivy, are you here? Harriet and Ivy? Uh, and Ivy is here. Please wave, Ivy. Hi, hello. <laughs> hey. Hi, Ivy. I think Harriet will be joining us. And we also have our mentees. Swetek always have mentees. These are people we mentor to be behind the, men the mentors. We had Percy and we had Oket somebody. Are you here? Can you wave? Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. You're here. Those are our mentees. So Swetek is an NGO registered in Kenya, and we founded this NGO with Eunice, the chair of the board, in 2017. At that time, both of us were doing our PhD dissertations, and we were both using technology. We were both in technology, and we had a passion for community empowerment. And therefore, both of us in our respective areas, we were doing community empowerment in our different varied ways. But we decided to come together and form this organization and register it with the NGO Board of Kenya so that we can use that to leverage on technology to mentor and to empower our respective communities. So Muranga is my home county and that is where we have started with Bint Shupavu and that is where we have a center we have other programs that we do. We do other programs like uh, vocational skills. So we train on vocational skills. We train on digital skills. When Jessica was in Kenya, we had just graduated a class of digital and online job students. We also have programs on sexually productive health rights. We do a lot of uh, sanitary pads uh, donation. We partner with other organizations. We do agribusiness and entrepreneurship. We have women whom we mentor in Homer Bay County. The women started as uh, widows who are HIV positive or they were affected. And now they were going through a tough time. That was sometimes in 2018. So we have worked with them and they do a lot of agriculture. They farm, they do goat farming. And we are also in the process of doing value addition with them. Then we do research and case studies. So we have already published and we also do Swetech smart homes. So our smart homes are quite a thing in Kenya. We have smart homes where we are start, we launched that program later last year where our women must have five features in their homes. They must have clean lighting. They must have a, a, a kitchen garden, healthy uh, clean water for taking and other things that are climate friendly. So we are planning to spread that program to other areas of Homa Bay County. So those are some of our programs that we are doing besides this powerful Bintishupavu program. We also uh, partner with other organizations like one called uh, PFP, which we do a lot of digital programs. We digitalize marginalized areas. So the Bintishupavu program now, so how did this come? We saw the call and we responded. When we saw the call, even before we responded, we looked at the requirement and we were kind of, wow, this is what we have been waiting for. So we, there were options. You were either to apply for KISA or, or, or Bint Shupavu. But when we read both, we both screamed Bint Shupavu is our thing. And the reason that it resonated so well with us is that at that time, we were doing mentorship of teenage girls, but we were doing that outside the school. So we would wait until school holidays. We would never venture into the schools. Actually, we did not know that we could even go to the schools and do mentorship from there. 
So when we saw that, we decided this is what Kenya needs. This is what Muranga needs. And because we already had a touch of the community, this program, we saw it as a way to link the school and the parents. So this program now act as a link between the school, the children and the teachers and also the parents outside. And the context of where we are implementing that program is very unique in its own way. One, it is an area that is really uh, prone of alcohol, alcoholism, drug abuse, idleness, poverty, Muranga is that kind of an area. So because of that, the girls that we are mentoring were going through a lot of trauma. Some are being brought up by drunkard parents, a lot of family conflicts, a lot of fights, a lot of dropout because if parents are fighting every day, a girl will not concentrate in class. If a parent is coming home drunk, a girl will not stay in class. That parent will not provide. So we therefore came in at a time that these girls really needed us. So, and one of the things that the program has really, really been appreciated is the way it brings a mentor. You know, a mentor is that person who a girl can talk to. So the concept of a mentor has really worked for us. The mentor, they call her, they call the mentors, the, our big sisters. So they are able to open up. So when a girl spends a, a whole evening watching the, pa the, the parents fighting, they, they will come to a mentor and they will talk to them about that. So these are some of the challenges that Muranga is facing. And this is where, this is a gap that Binti Shipavu is feeling at the school level where the girls are affected by all these. So we saw that call and once we got through, we were successful. We embarked on uh, recruiting or getting our mentors and we got the two powerful ladies, that is Harriet and Ivy. They have really been so wonderful in their work. And then from there, we had a, we, we had a training. Devoda and Aika came to Kenya. We had a nice training. They, they trained us. And we were also able to have all the questions we had answered. Because again, when we saw the curriculum before the training started, we were wondering, this is very Tanzania. Where does Kenya come in? And therefore, when the training took place, the two girls were able to unpack that for us. And you are able to see that it is not cast on stone. Binti Shupavu program is a program that fits in every context, so long as you customize it to your area. So very quickly, we were able to contextualize to our situation. And I must say that this program is one of the best and the first ever, I think, in the whole country. We've never had a program fully with a curriculum, training, and you know, it is able to adapt to different circumstances. So before we started the program, that was in first May, one of the things we did was bring in the parents because we wanted to work the journey together. So we had an inception period with the parents. We had a whole day with them. They told us what they are facing. We told them what we wanted to do. And therefore we got their buy-in. They actually signed for us and accepted that we have, uh, you can have our girls, you can mentor them. And because I use their words, you are coming in at the right time. They used another mother tongue, which says that if you know what we are going through with these girls, you should do, you should be with them throughout. So the parents appreciated when we told them and they have even up to now been very supportive. And I want to say that currently when a girl, a girl in the, a scholar misbehaves, one of the first person to be told is a mentor. And the mentors have really had to work with them through the between the parents and the teachers. So this is the, the, the power of this program. So we have had also parents confessing of the big change they have seen in their girls. And I want to say that in Kenya, one of one of the markers of obedience is a child, a, a girl going to church. So they all confess that my daughter is now going to church. When you hear that, it is a symbol that the girl is reforming. So uh, the girls are also very confident now. And do you remember that song that the girls performed at the beginning? Let me say that when the program started, those girls could not talk. They could not talk at all. But now the testimony we are getting from the teachers is even during assembly, even when there is a school gathering, 
if you ask a question, the only person who will answer is a scholar, the Bintishipavu girls, because we have started only with Form 1. So we want to progress with them to Form 2, and therefore they start out in their own ways. So the parents have also been confessing that um, the girls are now organized. One of them actually told me, imagine, imagine Judy, my girl now can wash her clothes. My girl now is waking up and without being told is going to church and organizing her time. So those are some of the powerful testimonies that we are getting from the parents. The teachers, the teachers are over excited. They are actually telling us you have taken a big burden. They call it a burden from us because anytime a girl is doing something, they will be referred. It is, Bint Shupavu has actually become a point of reference. Can you be like the Bint Shupavu girls? So this is a joy that we are experiencing through this uh, program. So uh, something else I need to say is that this journey has been like this because has been so easy and so loving because also our trainers, Devotha, are always at hand when the mentors have a question, they will go to them and they will ask any question. And also, our we also we always call her our love. Jessica lives to her name. We always call her her name. So she has also been very supportive of us and just an email away. And we appreciate the fact that she was also able to come to Kenya and see what we were doing. So these are the testimonies we have. The only big challenge we have, every other principal, every other head teacher now is calling in Moranga. Can we have been super in my school? Because they have heard the good news, they have seen what is happening. And the fact that these mentors go every week, every week they are there. It makes it, it makes it come out so nicely, so openly. The girls can have a weight of that day. They look forward to that day when the mentor is coming. And anything that they have that is pending, they always say, I want to talk to the mentor. When does she come on Monday? Okay. So when they come, there are a lot of issues. There are a lot of girls waiting to, to, to ask them questions, to walk the journey. And we are so grateful. And I want to say also that we are expecting that the, the, the previous dropouts that we had, we are hoping that the groups we have started, those girls will not drop out. The, the reason actually they were dropping out is because like, like uh, Devoda said, in Moranga, the situation was not children going, not going to school. We do not have that challenge. Our challenge is once they are in school, they have so many challenges and there is no one to speak to. So that is a gap we have really filled. And this gap, when a girl comes and she has been, and then also the schools we chose, the schools we chose are day schools. Day schools, the girls have to walk for long distances. And one of the things the parents told us they were facing, when the girls are walking to school, sometimes the motorbike, the, we call them boda boda here in Kenya, the boda boda guys or men would offer them lift in exchange of their bodies. And therefore, this is one of the things that the mentors really had to talk with them and also to talk to the parents. Can you talk to the girls? If a girl is walking for long distances, can you at least provide for her some, some fare so that she doesn't have to be wooed by a motorbike person to get a lift to school so the boarders would wait for them? And even when we started, the parents would say, can you tell our girls to stop moving with, with bike riders, border border guys? And that is one of the things that we have also got feedback that it is coming to an end. So as I conclude, I want to say that this program is our dream come true. It is a dream of Muranga girls coming true. And we are so excited to be the partners of Daring Girls. And we are looking forward to include many, many more girls. There are those principles that we have told now that we have started We'll have to wait until we see how these two schools work, and then we will expand. So we are hoping to include many, many more girls. And finally, we at least we've also had one, uh, one uh, function, one event during the menstrual health day. We partnered with uh, Daring Girls and also UNFPA, and we provided sanitary pads to all the girls that are in the schools that we are mentoring. So currently we are doing two schools 
Both of them are day schools and we have started with form ones. So we will expand as we go on. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be a partner of Daring Girls. Asanteri. Thank you, Dr. Judy. How about a round of applause for Dr. Judy and Sweet Tech. So well, great. Well, um, we have some images and a few videos to share with you. So Judy, I'll ask you to, uh, we'll go through some images here. I'd love to share with folks on the call. I know also we're going to be, we're coming up against time. So those of you who need to drop, please feel free. We are recording this and I'm happy to share the recording after the session. Um, but hopefully you can stick around for some of these photos to share of the work in action. And we're happy to take questions as well. Um, and if you have them, feel free to drop them in the chat at any point and we can answer them and then we'll pause for questions a little bit in a few minutes here. Um, but first, I wonder, Dr. Judy, if you can tell us a little bit about, this is Ivy, one of the mentors. Can you tell us how you identified the mentors and how you brought them on board? Mm, thank you so much. I'll be very brief because of time, like you say. So the, the mentors, when we read through the requirement of the program, we noted what the program was, uh, was all about. And therefore, we got these two through one referrals. We got we actually put an advert, but in combination with that, we used referrals. And I knew Ivy at first because Ivy is also my mentee. I've mentored her. She was actually she's actually a product of Sweater because we trained her in digital skills. So I knew she had those qualities, and we used that knowledge. And then through referrals, we also got Harriet. Harriet is that lady there. <laughs> That's great. Um, well, we've got a couple images of the schools here. This is Marichu Secondary School, one of the schools where you're working. Um, and this is Kaganda Secondary School, where we've got a little video here. Um, is there anything unique to the schools? I know you've mentioned a couple of the challenges, particularly around alcoholism and dropouts. Are there any other, um, I guess, unique challenges that girls are facing? I think Kaganda, especially, um, girls have long walks to the school, and you were talking a bit about that. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the schools? Yes, about these schools, we we because I, this is my home area also. So I had data, we had the situational analysis, and these two schools were also lagging behind in performance. The performance was very poor. So before we chose the school, we did pre-visits and we asked why the schools were performing so poorly. And actually in the two schools, the, 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 the girls, they were, the group that performs poorly are the girls in the two schools. So our analysis had shown that these schools were performing poorly. There were a lot of dropouts also because of those family issues. And the girls were simply unfocused. So those were the, we actually had questionnaires before we, we embarked on this school. So we sampled like 12 schools. We kept narrowing them down until we realized that these two schools needed us more than any other, and especially the girls. And by the way, these two schools are, are, they are, are mixed, meaning they are girls and boys in each one of them. For, for this school called Mericho, the one on the slide, the, the girls are day scholars and the boys are boarders. You can imagine that scenario. So the girls come in to find boys who are in boarding and therefore they face a lot of, they were facing a lot of challenges and therefore performing poorly, very poorly. Yes. Thank you. I think one of the things that really struck me, Judy, when I visited is how supportive the principals at both of the schools have been of the program. And um, I have a, a short video here of the principal and vice principal from, uh, from Marichu Secondary School that I'd like to share with everyone so you can hear in their words what the program has meant to their school. I'm Felix Dinamoy, the principal of Marichu Secondary School. And I'm Wanjiro Ndaiga, the deputy principal of the school. It has been such a nice prog program that has seen the girls grow from one degree of uh, personal reflection and understanding. And today we have girls that are really maturing up. By the time they joined the Bint Shupavu program, quite a number had issues with the boyfriends, and uh, we had so many issues as far as discipline was concerned, but today that is almost becoming a, a thing of the past because the girls have been made to understand themselves and uh, even be able to fight 
for themselves as far as uh, the boy girl relationships are concerned in fact we've seen a great improvement even in the education they are moving up academically and we believe that by the end of the four year course here these girls will go very far and become women of substance in the near future yeah, definitely we are very excited. We feel greatly honored that uh, Binti Shupavu through Swetech could identify our school as one of the bene uh, beneficiaries of the program. We have seen a lot of uh, change, improvement in our girls. We have heard what uh, the program is doing in Tanzania. We interacted with the mentors from Tanzania and we saw what kind of work they are, uh, they are doing and we are hoping for the same for our school. It's a program that we would love to continue in our school and we are ready to support it as much as we can. I love the, the principal and vice principal there for you. Um, and I have a couple images here of the parent meetings. I know Judy mentioned that at the outset of the program, she involved parents and they had meetings to make sure the parents understood what would be happening, um, what program the girls would be going through, what the curriculum looked like. Um, and I'm fortunate that when I was there in July, the parents also came back for another meeting and I heard just a lot of great feedback that I think Judy's already shared about parents saying that their girls are planning their timetables better. They're being more responsible in their personal lives. They're helping more at home and taking on responsibilities both at home and at school. Um, one of the things that one of the, um, there are a lot of, and Judy, maybe you can address this too. In your application, you spoke about this and I, I definitely saw this when I was there is that a lot of the girls mothers go to the city to work or they don't have mother figures and a lot of girls are responsible for raising younger siblings and are also being cared for by grandmothers. Um, I wonder if you can say anything about that and um, and then I, uh, I'll pause here and we can just look at a couple of these pictures while you're talking about that relationship. Uh, thank you so much. And yes, the, the parents you see here, like 50% are not the real parents, but they are grandparents of the children. The reason is that the real parents of these girls uh, have run away to Nairobi. And again, the reason for that is a circle of, uh, of school dropout and lack of focus. So even the daughters, the mothers of these children, they had no one even to work with them. So they got poor grades. They did not proceed to colleges or higher education. So they actually went to the city and left their girls their daughters with the, their own mothers, with the grandmothers now of the daughters. So 50%. And you can imagine a, a, a woman of like, let's say, 60, 70 years is the one taking care. The, the girls have confessed to the mentors that they have they had no one to talk to, do, to them about menstrual periods, about their own inner feelings, because the grandparents whom they live with are quite elderly. Their own mothers don't even come to the, to the village. They are in the city. That's a big challenge facing Muranga. Thank you. One of the stories that really stayed with me, a grandmother had stood up and said that she had taken her daughter, She the daughter had been living with her father and the grandmother realized she wasn't getting what she needed from the father, that you really need a strong woman in your life um, as a girl, especially at, at this age. And so she had recently taken the girl in to live with her and this program started maybe not long after. And she said, this program is what my granddaughter needed. And I think to echo the sentiments you shared earlier, Judy, that this was the right program at the right time. And um, and I definitely heard that when I was there meeting with some of the parents and grandparents. Um, and these are a couple of images of the girls in the schools. And I wonder if um, Judy and Devota, if you might say a word. Um, we've talked a bit about some of the challenges that girls in the area face, but I wonder if you might say a word about how the curriculum has already been adjusted. Um, have things been rearranged or has it been examples that have swapped in and out? Can you talk a little bit about that process of um, sort of contextualizing the curriculum for the needs of girls here? Yeah, Jessica, I'll talk about the curriculum um, that we've been working very closely with the uh, Swetek mentor to um, contextualize to fit the Muranga context. So uh, one of the things that we worked with is to now see how we can adjust the content to re respond to the needs of the girls. So um, as uh, Judy has mentioned, these girls really need a, a role model, someone who can really um demonstrate to them what is possible 
because you see like most of the parents have, you know, uh, moved to Nairobi and they don't have like that f- female figure. So we did work on the content to see, uh, to make it very relevant. And um, for example, the first content that is about motivation, most of the stories that we try to use, we made the stories coming from their context. We tried our best to get stories from female, successful female from Moranga, but um, sometimes it was hard to get those stories, but then we went to like different um, areas which are nearby Muranga where we could find stories that you can share with the girls and say, you know, these are the same, um, you know, people came from like similar situation like you, but they have been, been able to really overcome that and to, um, to be where they are. The most thing that you're trying to do with the girls and the content is to acknowledge that challenges are there to acknowledge that their challenges are different from any 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 other people's challenge, but also to say, to share that there's hope, to share that there's someone that they can talk to anytime they're facing a challenge that they think is bigger than them. And this someone who's always there to listen to their challenge, to really empathize with what they're going through, but also to work with them on how to solve these challenges. So most of the of the adjustment that we did is having examples that are very relevant to their context, but also, um, you know, that being a challenge, not having so many stories of that kind, we go to like a very closer uh, geographical location to get these stories so that the girls can really relate to that. Some of the content that... Um, we felt that were not relevant, we changed it completely. So we were looking at um, cultural norms and uh, the issues that you know in Tanzania are very prevalent, and but then in Muranga, those are not prevalent. So we'll change those and to adopt into the challenges that are so prevalent into Muranga so that the girls can feel that this is meant for them and this is speaking to them. And one of the things that we've started recently is to open up a platform where the girls can be able to now share how this um, program uh, responding to their needs, but also to reflect on how they would want the program to address what are the other needs that they want the program to address? So um, last week, um, the mentors have held a reflection meeting with the girls and um, they're just trying to see how the previous uh, two units have been helpful to the girls, how it hasn't been helpful to the girls and what they really want the program to respond to in the future. So that's how we are trying to really make it um, the girls at the center, but also make it more responsive to what the girls need. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, if you have any questions, I will invite you to pop them in the chat. Judy, did you have anything you wanted to add there? Yeah, I, I must add that the, the curriculum that has been worked on uh, is written now, it really now resonates with us because our our issues have been put now into, into place, into focus in the curriculum. And something else I forgot to say about these girls is that these are girls in what people call in Kenya small schools. In Kenya schools, uh, according to laws, they are the high national schools. And this was the mentors. They had never seen a road. They had never seen a mentor. To them, they knew the mentors are those president of this country, president of this country. So when mentors, when programs are there in Kenya, they tend to go to the big national schools. But one consideration we did in choosing these schools is their level. We wanted also to prove to these girls in what people call small schools. We wanted to show them that they can also make it. And we want this to be an example. Our goal is to ensure that this program becomes an example of the fact that it is possible for girls in small schools to excel amidst all the challenges they are going through, especially from their homestead, from their homes. Thank you. 
Thank you. That reminds me of a comment. Um, the principal at um, Kaganda Secondary School uh, made a comment that really stayed with me. And he said that he loved this program because it was helping the girls see, um, you know, really truly what they could become and what they could be. He said, I want my students to see the world like a giraffe, not like the fly. The fly just sees only what's right in front of it, but the giraffe sees up high and it can see the world before them. And I, I want that for my students. And I just love that quote. And um, so I'm glad that Pantishi Bravo is there uh, helping girls uh, reach that level. So um, I want to share a couple of upcoming dates with folks. And again, if you have any questions, just pop them right in the chat there and we'll answer them um, as we wrap up here. But uh, just a couple dates I want to put on your radar. Uh, we are going to be doing an Instagram live where you can hear from Ivy and Harriet, the Sway Tech mentors. They're lovely and they have lots of great stories to share about the girls they've been working with. So um, join us on Instagram. It'll be eight in the morning mountain time on October 24th. Um, and then in April, we are very very happy to welcome Judy to come to the United States. She and I will be in Washington, D.C. for a few days in April, and then we're bringing her to Denver, where she will be the guest of honor at our annual fundraiser at the Posner Center next April. So save the date early. You'll start hearing a lot of communication about that because we want as many of you to meet Judy as possible while she's here. Um, and if you'd like to go meet her in Kenya, we are also putting a supporter trip together for late July of next year. This will be limited to about 10 people. So if you're interested right now and want to make sure that I send details as we get our draft agenda together and, and the pricing of the trip, um, send me a note, hello at daringgirls.org or to my personal email, jessica at daringgirls.org um, and let me know and we'll get you on the list for that. Um, so lots of exciting stuff to come. Um, and then before we let you go with the day, I just want to pause if there are any questions. We're so proud of the progress of this year that um, this quietly started in January. So much happened so quickly with the training in April and with Judy and her team implementing the programs in May. And now here we are in October and um, it's really been a, quite an amazing journey to see the progress. Um, so I hope that we've shared a bit of that with you today. And if there are any questions, we're happy to take a couple now, if there are any. And if not, we're, you know where to find us also. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'm going to assume that we've answered every question and you know where to find us if you have more. And so I will just wrap by saying thank you. Um, you are such an important part of this work and your donations and your support are what is helping us expand this programming to more girls and more places and to have this beautiful partnership, which we um, hope to continue to expand to more partners and more countries uh, with your support. And I will ask for your help tomorrow. You guys have the sneak peek preview of meeting Judy today. Tomorrow we'll be announcing all of this on our social media channels and an email. If you catch our post, please like it or share it if you're so inclined to help us get the word out about this. Um, we're just really excited about this true partnership and the next step in this journey together. So thank you all for being part of it and uh, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone.